Now I'll say it. Hello and welcome to the Build With Bear workshop. Uh, every, let's say, sixth or seventh stream, I just forget that I mute my mic before the stream starts. Hello, Ultron. Happy to have you here. Harold, thank you for hosting, as always. Appreciate it very much. Uh, Ultron already threw the emotes in there. If you're currently a subscriber, you can throw the Bear Cave emote, the Lego emote, maybe the Scythe emote if you're Tier 2. Although our Tier 2 friends uh, just support and they aren't here live that often. Uh, Jam is here. Recyclable is here. Uh, Recyclable let me know uh, that they uh, sent me uh, something off my wish list, which is rad. Um, hey, I figured something out. This is very silly. And I didn't know this was a thing. It's not perfect, but if you, I can apparently go to my Amazon wish list and I can filter it uh, by uh, purchased and I can see the things that have been purchased. Now, this isn't perfect because it doesn't give you like an, uh, it doesn't seem to give it an order of when they were purchased, but you can kind of be like, oh, wait, oh, that, and uh, and uh, it, a lot of it also includes things that I sometimes buy things off the wish list just by clicking on it. So it includes that, which is not helpful. But um, yeah, uh, I didn't know that. And that's a thing I can do now. And that's a thing apparently I could do forever and just didn't know I could do it. Um, they should still send me a notification. I should get an email from Amazon anytime someone buys something off my wish list and they should tell me what it is and give me the tracking number if that's applicable. They don't do that. I feel like they should. Hey, it's Wednesday night and I know one, that's weird. Ultron just resub uh, resubbed. That's nine months streak. Thank you so much, Ultron. Uh, very much appreciate your support. Thank you for uh, having the notification in there. Yeah, let's throw... The uh, Bear Cave, the Lego, Scythe, whatever you got. Um, it's a newborn baby. Yep, just drooling, just drooling wherever. Thank you very much for um, for that. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, uh, Amazon just sent me an email, and they don't. But also, it's Wednesday. Why am I streaming on a Wednesday night? Because you deserve three build streams a week. And I am... Working Friday night, uh, and I'm going to play some games on Friday. I'm working Sunday night. I have plans Sunday day, and I have plans all day on Saturday and all night on Saturday. So I'm streaming tonight, and I'll also stream tomorrow. I'm going to do a build stream two nights in a row. I better have things to talk about tomorrow. I have plan. Believe me, it is really rare that I ever do this. I have planned a thing to talk about tomorrow. I'm going to talk about some of the anime that's coming out in October. There are, uh, I believe, uh, four shows. Yes. There are uh, five shows coming out in October that I can talk about. And that'll be tomorrow. Uh, Recyclable says, I'm assuming they don't inform uh, wish listers because they're supposed to be gifts. Well, you can click a thing say, don't spoil me. So if I click that, don't spoil me, when I then sort by purchased, it w nothing would show up. So you can do that. So there is a way. And, and you know, for me, it's just like, Lashbrook's here. Hi, Lashbrook. Um, I just want to know. Because, like, you know, Recyclable, thank you for telling me. Now I'll keep an eye out. Um, in the mail, you know, in a couple days, a, a package will arrive. Uh, and that's helpful. But yeah, uh, I'm at FlameCon this Saturday. Uh, and, and then there's also a friend of mine's having a birthday party Saturday night. So I'm going to go from FlameCon to my friend's birthday party. And uh, so I'm going to stream tonight and then tomorrow. And then Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to stream a couple hours of Hearthstone. Uh, I think I finally figured out my Thief deck, uh, Quest Thief deck that like works. It doesn't have my favorite card to put in the deck. So it's a bummer. But it still works. I don't know. But we're going to build tonight. And that's fun. And I have a... Th Woo! I got stuff to talk about. We are going to... Uh, we're going to finish up the pickup truck and caravan. we got to finish the caravan and then connect them together. we got a, our, our friend driving the truck in there. 
Uh, for some reason, they they built this truck, as you can see. Maybe they, yeah, you can see it like that. They have them sitting in the middle. There's room for two minifigs in there, but they designed it odd, in my opinion. Whatever. It means that when they're driving around, the the other two people. Oh, you can see this is green. This is supposed to be green. Uh, oh, we can kind of see it. Uh, the other two uh, minifigs are going to have to be in the in the caravan. That's not right. Um, and then we have the Vignagina uh, to build. The Vignagina from F91, the movie F91, F91. Uh, the Vignagina, a.k.a. Megatron, because it's uh, off-white and purple. Uh, it reminds me a lot of Megatron. Uh, and then the you know this the symbol above its head is a little decepticon -y. Um Now some people like the uh, the Vignagina too because it's like the uh, the kind of burst things in the back are more like wings, but that's red and red as a base color is a little boring, but this beautiful purple is not boring. Uh, so I'm excited about that. So we've got a few things I'm excited about. My new model kit to build. It's the RE100, and I'll explain what that is if you're if you're new to that line. But we're gonna build some Lego, and I'm gonna fucking talk about the last two days since we last streamed, which was Monday. We did a build thing, and on Monday I talked about. Let's go to the overhead. Um, I do want to point out uh, the one of my favorite things about this kit is the coffee maker that we made uh because it's just like a bunch of little pieces there and suddenly i guess that's a coffee maker it's like an aero press i don't like that that's fun and the microwave and the uh cabinet or the oven and the cabinet it's a fun little thing in the caravan um i'm gonna try to build like this i'll move my minifigs aside we'll keep the truck there so on monday if you watch the stream i was talking about how on tuesday i had a job interview now, I apply for a lot of stuff. I go in for interviews. Going in for an interview isn't new. But this one was interesting because it was uh, in marketing. Um, and they, the, the person that contacted me, um, the HR person, uh, the head of the HR, was like, we like your resume. You're different than other people that applied. Uh, your skill set is very unique. Um, and your experience is definitely different than what we normally have. So we'd love for you to come in. And I was like, cool, cool. So yesterday, I walk into a place. I have a 9.30 appointment. I get there 9.21 because I want to be early, but I don't want to be too early. I get in there. There's other people there. Some of them are, are applying like me. Some of them are in round two of their applications. They had posted like six jobs uh, on LinkedIn. So I was one of, you know, like they weren't all applying for the same job as me. So I was like, that's cool, whatever. And whatever, you know, like what it is what it is. And then I noticed at 930 in the morning, there are a lot of people there. And that's not odd for a job. But they're in these big conference rooms. And every room is loud. And every room has music pumping out of it, but different music, so it's different meetings. And then I hear, like, call and response and chanting. And that is my first red flag. A minor red flag is that there is no signage. The door had no signage of the name of the company. That doesn't... This in New York, that's not actually that rare because sometimes you have to pay extra to have your your name on the signs. So that's not actually too rare in New York. But there was no signage inside the lobby, and that felt weird. And then I noticed this big framed Biggie poster, Biggie Smalls poster. But it's the only thing hanging anywhere that I can see in the lobby. And it just felt intentionally out of place. And then I sat for an hour because of, apparently, a miscommunication. And that didn't feel right. Someone's running behind. Hey, we said 930, but that's when I come in. There's traffic, whatever. 
No, I sat for an hour before someone said, hey, we're running behind. We're going to see you in a minute. So go in, talk to the HR person, the person that emailed me, talk about my resume, talk about my previous experience, tells me a little bit about what the job is, that it's they work with a lot of clients. Some of their clients are charities. Uh, they have offices all over the place. They have offices in New York. Uh, in Chicago and London, um, they're working with an energy company uh, that is that is uh, solar, and they're going to take on New York with it, and that's exciting. And I'm like, great, this seems cool. Marketing programs seem fun, whatever. We get to the point where he's like, let's talk about salary, and I was like, yeah, let's talk about salary. And he goes, okay, so. Your training is going to take from 5 to 12 days. That's usually the estimate. Usually 5 for people that know what's going on, have some experience in this, whatever. And I'm like, great. It's like, yeah, in that 5 days, you know, you're probably going to make about 500 a week before taxes on that. Uh, for, you know, and then once you go full time, it's, uh, it bumps up. You make about a thousand a week before taxes. I was like, okay, it's forty-hour week. Okay, all right, yeah, okay. It's like there's room for advancement. We promote from within. We don't prom- we don't hire new managers outside. We're always promoting from within. I'm like that sounds fun. That sounds good, because uh, you know, uh, what else? Well, there was there was something. There was something that I was like, and that seemed like okay, sure seems good this seems like a thing that i want to you know take a look at here uh i want to have more conversations about this all right sure uh and they're like here was the one so round two would be the next day which is today and he goes okay you're one of my five i've seen 20 today you're one of my five i haven't missed most of pat's boiler room stories says asmo yeah so Hi, Asmo, also. So, we have this meeting. It seems pretty good, right? I'm thinking, okay, you know, like, oh, the other thing is the hours are 11.30 to 8.30, which seems a little odd, but they are a company that has uh, offices all across the country and offices in uh, the UK. Maybe they just found that that works best so they can really communicate with other offices. Although it doesn't sound like you do much of that. So I was confused why the hours were 1130 to 830. Also, there were a lot of people in that office before 1130. So is it really till 830? That seemed odd. That was one of the... So a lot seemed off and a lot seemed odd about what was happening. And... I, uh, I left yesterday, left the meeting yesterday thinking, okay, I think this is a pyramid scheme. I think I'm involved in a pyramid scheme, but there's a base salary. So if I know this is a pyramid scheme and I know I'm not going to do well with that because that's what pyramid schemes are, that I'm probably not going to work my way up to the point where it actually pays. But if it's got a weekly paycheck, if it's got an hourly rate, then I'll make some money and have a job while I look for a job, which will take off a lot of pressure. And also, if I'm not planning on staying because it's a fucking pyramid scheme, then I will take all the pressure off of having to work very hard. Because I will just work hard enough to keep the money coming in while I work for something new. And I can stream late and it won't be a big deal. I'll stream 10 to midnight and it will suck for Harold. But it will be fine for for our West Coast friends. Uh, And, you know, Saturday I would stream early to make up for it or whatever. Like, I'd figure it out. It was all doable. So I went in today with the game plan of... Say what needs to get said, be responsible, ask the right questions, get this get this gig, make some money. Please, multi-level marketing opportunity. Yes. 
So I meet with somebody else. She says that part of part of her train, part of the where she's at in the company is uh, doing these interviews. Um, talks about the stage one, stage two. Stage two is you're starting to help train some of the stage ones. Stage three, you're in the position she's in. Stage four, you can open up your own branch. And when she says that you could open up your own branch, I was like, oh, yeah, 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 this is the fucking pyramid scheme. Holy shit, this is a bad pyramid scheme. But I don't say that. I ask questions. I ask about her. She talks about what she wants to do. She's like, this is the best way to make money uh, that I have found the quickest way because I want to open up a bakery. And this way I'm going to get capital to do that. She's very honest about that with me. I'm like, sure, whatever, lady. You got you reached the point where you can fucking be selling to me, so sure. And then she explains what stage one and stage two do, mostly. Stage two does a little bit of training, but most of stage two is still what stage one does. Stage five, repeat of stage three, but with two stage life bar. Stage five. Well, stage five, I don't even, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what stage five is. I guess you're in charge of the other the stage fours. I don't know. Stage one is working to get new customers for the client. It is not marketing. It is cold calling and door knocking. Door to door. That And guess what? That $500, that $1,000, that's commission based. If you get 10 new customers that week, you get that $500. And then when you hit stage two, it becomes $1,000. That's... So, the money you get per week that he said, that's not salary, that's commission. And then when you hit uh, stage three, uh, you can you start earning a commit, you start earning a percentage of stage one and stage two's uh, what they get. Uh, yes, Air. Uh, we are talking about the interview that I had today. My second interview is when I learned what was going on. So she said, hey, do you have any questions for me? And I should also mention, because this company has like so many people just in group exercises and group meetings, we're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation at uh, a uh, a Panera Bread that's right near it. This is where she takes people to have like one-on-one -on -one conversations. So we're at a Panera Bread, and then I just say, "Okay, um, I think uh, I I just say just so you know, I'm uh, looking for hourly employment or salary. I'm not looking to work commission-based." So, uh, I'm sorry to waste your time. And she's like, okay, well, I guess we, we can end it here. Very pleasant. We shook hands. I went one way. She went back to the offices. Did anyone ask if you were a cop? No. Yeah, uh, Asmo says, Bernie Madoff didn't start by swindling millionaires. You have to start by swindling other people. So, here's the thing. I don't know... If every person that runs, I don't know where the lie is and where the truth is. There are definitely people working there who make money. Certainly. I don't know how many of them actually make money. I have to imagine that a lot of the stage ones don't make any fucking money and they bust their asses and they have, and they're young people uh, that do this. Clearly, I am not necessarily what they're looking for and I didn't want to uh, the highest of turnover certainly where the person who interviewed me was at she definitely hustled right she got it done she got she did whatever she could she used all the connections she needed to use she's done the door to door she's made it work respectful excited for her happy for her and the work she's did didn't want to be disrespectful to her. Didn't want to say anything negative to her. I don't remember her name. Because she said it very fast. 
which is also a red fucking flag. I should say, the person that has been emailing me, Daniel, never met Daniel. I met Robert, and I met a woman whose name was said very fast, and I did not catch it. So, I wonder if Daniel is real, and I bet Daniel is not. I bet Daniel is a fake name they use for email correspondence. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so I left that very unhappy. Uh, I, and then I, uh, I sent uh, an update because, uh, uh, you know, my folks want to hear what's going on. I just sent my mom an email being like, good news and bad news, good news. I had a second uh, interview today. Uh, bad news, <laughs> they're a scam and a pyramid scheme. And my mom goes, uh, these people should be shot, which is uncharacteristic of my mom. Uh, she mostly just wants me to have a fucking job uh, and generally does not wish ill will upon other people, but it made me laugh a lot that my mom was just like, brr, brr, shaky fist at these people. Um, but yeah, I'm sure some people make money. But also, hey, just so you know, I know myself well enough to know that I can't work on commission-based only. Uh, we've got soft with a tier one that's four months currently in a four month streak thank you so much yes ultron and herald already throwing the bear cave and the lego emote in there thank you self for your subscription uh very much appreciated thank you very much uh, four months is rad um i'm having a good evening you know i'm laughing about this stuff uh i know for myself i'm not gonna work well on commission or commission only I could certainly work a job where commission was part of it, but I need some sort of guarantee of some sort of payment because also cold calling or door to door. The cold calling was technically people that like signed up for a thing or like wanted more information, but that doesn't mean anything. And also people sell your information all the time. Uh, ooh, this is kind of cool. So uh, there will be like a, a door here on this side, but you also have this swings open so you can see what's going on in there. Uh, which also makes sense because the way this caravan is built uh, internally, it's a real tight fit where the chairs are to get to the stove and stuff if you don't open up the the, uh, the side door. Get yourself a little more room. But it's still, this is still a pretty cool kit. Uh, but yeah, um... So it's all fucked. Uh, I am bummed that I got up early yesterday. I am bummed that I went to two different meetings. I'm happy that one of them only took a half an hour because she was prompt. She did meet me at 1130, uh, which was fine. Right on the dot, basically. So I didn't waste too much of my time there. Uh, but I'm mostly bothered by the mental energy because... I didn't plan that this job was mine, but I did start thinking about, okay, so uh, it's till 8.30. Can I make that, you know, Fridays? Can I leave early so that I can still make it at 8.15? Because I'm supposed to be at uh, wait, uh, 8.45. I'm supposed to be at work for my, you know, the, the theater that I work at. Or, okay, so... I will have to tell them that I'm not available at the time. I can't work Fridays anymore. Or, hmm, I wonder when they want me to start. I have si I have not mentioned Seattle yet. Eventually, I will have to mention Seattle. I did not have to mention Seattle. Uh, and the fact that I was going away for five days, uh, which includes weekends, but whatever. I didn't have to do any of that, which is good, but I did was starting to think about that. Like, okay. You know, and like I said, I was starting to think about the fact that I didn't want that was this wasn't going to be a long term job, but it could have been something while I look for something else, which is like great. And it wouldn't be a contract gig and it would be, you know, whatever. So I'm uh, frustrated by it. It's a. Uh, And, uh, you know, I look, I, I'm a pretty good talker. I'd like to use my skills 
to uh, in in a different way and marketing like there's some stuff that I would certainly be good at uh, in that world it's just not with this company and you know if I had been if I had a bunch of savings that I could live off while I tried to make this work I might be able to do it I mean maybe me 20 years ago as a 29 year old maybe 10 years ago I would have been like amped and ready to go uh, this is cool uh, I'm going to try to get this decal right because as you can see uh, this is Lego here and this is a decal so I'm going to try to get this so there isn't a gap um, and I'm, so I think I'm going to try to apply this now that it's in place instead of doing it separate as I was doing before the nice thing about Lego decals is you can kind of futz with it a bit. That looks better. Yeah. It doesn't go all the way to the edge, but it looks cleaner there. So I'll do that on the other side when the time comes. Uh, I also like uh, this decal here. I didn't show this decal off. I'm going to I'm gonna pop this up and show this decal because I think it's, it's pretty good. Uh... Yeah, I can't. But anyway, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm mostly frustrated at the time wasted going to this thing. Uh, I didn't show this decal that's on the inside. Uh, it's, uh, like, it, it looks like it's a, uh, either tell, it's a TV. Basically, it's a decal. They're apparently, they're watching monster trucks. I think that's a fun decal. Anyway, uh, Tomorrow is a new day, and tomorrow I will continue to hunt for work uh, and new job opportunities. Uh, and that's all I can do, is to continue to grind and to keep going. Uh, it's very frustrating. Uh, it's a bummer when old friends come around and push an MLM on you. It's like, why? Happened to me last week. Uh, recyclable, I don't know what you mean. I apologize. Uh, oh, multi-level marketing. That's what you mean. Yes. Okay, I do know what you mean. Yes. Uh, in the same way that, like, there's always a friend. You know, and it used to be, yes, it used to be there was always a friend who would, like, my mom would have that because she was a teacher, There'd always be someone that like went part time or was teaching part time that was like had some sort of product and wanted to sell not just the product, but who else wants on board? And you're like, oh, this is a bummer. Oh, stop. Stop this. Stop being this. No, get out of here. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing with mine was it did. It seemed like we weren't targeting friends because that's a huge red flag. They never said friends. They never said family. Who knows? Maybe that was part of it, but uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not here for that. It's uh, it's real. Fr it's just frustrating because it was a waste of my time and energy. I mean, it was good to go in and do interviews. Those things are always good. You know, every interview, interview I do, uh, is you know uh like good for practice and good for that and one of these will lead to employment it's just that this one clearly was not that and it was frustrating uh trust your instincts i guess like look i stuck around because the promise of an hourly rate made the not the shitty parts of it worth it while and and like like i said I have trouble not caring about things, but in that position, I would not be caring about that job, and it would be easier to work for something else. But, unfortunately, you know, uh, that was lied to, and their, you know, the base was on commission, and no, thank you. I'm 39 years old, I'm not working on a commission. In happier news, says Asmo, with some happy news, probably. Uh, my best friend is getting married next week, and I get to spend a week in Vegas, which I'm excited about. Hell yeah, Asmo. That rules. 
Uh, congratulations to your best friend. Uh, the fact that you're excited about Vegas is awesome. I've never been. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm happy that you're happy about it. That sounds cool. Uh, hmm. Okay. So maybe I... These are supposed to be red? Okay. But yeah, I'm happy you're happy about it. Uh, another instance here where these are clearly uh, the orange lights, but I had used the orange lights in the back, and these are supposed to be red. Uh, the red, it just these just don't look different enough in the in the booklet, so I end up using the photo as reference, which is frustrating. But yeah, I, I hope you have a great time in uh, Vegas, and I hope the wedding goes off without a hitch. Other than the two of them getting hitched. Boom. Shakalaka. Nailed it. Uh, but yeah, I'm uh, going to be all right. But I'm uh, pretty PO'd comes to all of that. But this week is going to be good because uh, I'm going to apply for a bunch of stuff tomorrow. I took the rest of today off and was just like, fuck this. I'm just going to watch videos and hang out, uh, caught up on some wrestling, just relaxed after that. But tomorrow, send out a bunch of resumes, apply for some stuff online, uh, do another Facebook post where I go, hey, did you know I do contract work and data entry and a bunch of nonsense that I could work in your office if someone's sick or whatever? Now you know. I could do that again and, and get in all that. And then stream tomorrow, Friday. Got my 4 p.m. stream. Excited about that. That'll be fun. And uh, go to work. That'll be good. And then Saturday's fucking Flame Con. Hell yeah, Flame Con. So excited about that. Gonna work for my boy Louie. Gonna help produce some shows and help work there. Uh... I'm going to buy some stuff from Kate Leth. Say hi to uh, to some friends that are coming into town for it. Go see some people. Go chat. Hang out. Go to my friend Matt's, one of my dearest friends in the world. Um, uh, I'm very excited. Uh, his birthday is on Saturday, or his party's on Saturday. So I'm going to go hang out with my, with my boy Matt. And that's going to rule. Because I'm already going to be working until 7 to 8. And so I was like, I'm not going to rush back here and stream Saturday night, which is why I'm streaming tonight. Instead, I'm just going to go into a different part of Brooklyn and go to a birthday party. Ooh, we got this teal blue here. I really like this teal. Right now, or light blue. I like this light blue. It's good. Good color. Um, I mean, this is just coming together nice and easy. And there and this is gonna go like here I guess and like you know eventually pop in I think that's what this does I don't know that's my guess I'm you know just kind of going with it uh, good call and taking some time away from today's nonsense yes uh, yeah I mean that's the thing it's just like I'm just I get notifications every day from LinkedIn and I'm just not gonna like uh, not gonna let it stress me out I'm bummed I'm gonna let myself be bummed about it but I'm not gonna let it get to me but I just knew that like today I was like I'll do groceries I'll catch up on some video stuff uh, play some Hearthstone today I uh, started a new Fallout 4 save uh, for no good reason. Oh, no, a good reason. I got some mods for a settlement building, and I was like, I'm going to build some cool settlements. Originally, I started, I was like, I'm not going to build a bunch of settlements. I'm going to keep a small amount and just make them all excellent. That has not happened. I, I'm already just going through all of them and building a ton of settlements and making cool shit at each one. got this mod that lets you plant apple trees and the apple trees uh give 
you know, one per person gives you six food and uh, happiness. And so I'm just planting apple trees everywhere I go. I'm like Johnny Appleseed over here, fixing the uh, the Commonwealth at, with cool apple trees and making apple pies, selling them to vendors. It's very soothing. Uh, thanks for the. Oh yeah, we talked about some sushi here. Uh, I know there's that like pizza place hole in the wall that's apparently like the best pizza in Vegas that you have to like go to a hotel and then like walk down a hallway. I remember that being a favorite uh, of the CES crew. Various folks I know going to CES. But I don't remember, unfortunately, many specifics. All right, so this goes in here and then we're going to build up. We still have to build our door to build the, the roof. We're coming along on this. We've got, you know, an least one more decal to put on yeah one more decal this is gonna lock in like that I guess just cool I like this pickup and caravan it's pretty neat all right now we're gonna put some gray in there but yeah I uh let's see is there anything else going uh, going on with me I think, so I'm going to do a bunch of work stuff tomorrow, but like tomorrow, like I said, tomorrow night is the normal Thursday stream, and, you know, in the second half of the show, we're going to talk about anime, normally I talk about the shows that come out on Thursday, I'll talk about the shows that come out on Tuesday, two shows I watch on Tuesday, two shows I watch on Wednesday, one show I watch on Thursday. Today I'm going to talk about four shows after the break, you know, the pause for the cause which is coming up, and then I don't... You know, like, so tomorrow, there's just one anime for me to talk about. Uh, and, uh, so tomorrow, we got two things. One, I'm going to Jollibee's. I'm going to, there's, uh, there's one Jollibee in, uh, in Manhattan. I've never been. It's by the Arby's, and it's the only Arby's. So when I go in that area, I just get Arby's. But Jan talked up Jollibee so much this week that I want to go. And I want to get some chicken and rice at Jollibee's. Uh, so I'm going to do that tomorrow so I can talk about my experience having lunch or at Jollibee's. Ha, uh, Jollibee's, I'm Filipino-American. Yeah, uh, like there's one. And Jan was talking it up, and... I want to do it. I should get the spaghetti. You disagree with Jan's opinion. Okay. So, part of me thinks I should get the spaghetti because that seems like the fucking thing to get. But then also, chicken. I should get the chicken at a chicken place. And chicken and rice just sounds good. And I've had Filipino rice before. Uh, homemade, not, uh, you know, chain. Um... So um, that's what I'm thinking is I should get the chicken with rice. If you have a recommendation, feel free to tell me. Um, I don't know if I want sweet spaghetti. I don't know if I do. Also, yeah, I don't know. I feel like you should get the chicken at a chicken place, but you know. Uh, and uh, yeah, of course you have, you have a different thoughts. You know, everyone everyone's got different thoughts when it comes to to. You know, their their places. Uh, to experience it, get the spaghetti, chicken, and their peach mango pie. I'm probably going to get the peach mango pie. I'm going to go for dinner and and get or around dinner and get something there. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get the spaghetti. I'm going to go and see what the spaghetti looks like. But I don't know. I want to go there. So I'm going to do that tomorrow. I got to go in that neighborhood anyway. So I'm going to do that. That's, that way I get it. I grew up with sweet spaghetti. So when I had real spaghetti, my mind was blown. Yeah, that must have been real savory for you. There's no tomato in in that, which is just interesting. I mean, it's just, you know, this is a different way of doing things, right? I'm not like here to be like that stupid or anything. 
that's not my y'all know that's certainly not my way uh asmo says my local arby's closed so i'd recommend going there because i oddly uh miss their roast beef yeah i mean i get a big beef and cheddar but here's the thing i get to arby's once every couple months because like i said there is one arby's and it's close to things i like to go to and people i like to see but right next to it is the jollybee and i've never been there and so i want to go to the hat i want to go to the jollybee because i've never been and that's the whole thing um and i can stop in and see some friends zorbs is here hi everyone how's everyone with wednesday zorbs it's lovely to have you here welcome 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 uh, I'm doing all right. Uh, talking, we're talking about uh, 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 Jolly Bee, the Filipino chain restaurant that I'm going to be going to make an appearance at tomorrow. Um, it's something to talk about because I'm streaming tomorrow like I normally do, and I want to have some stuff to talk about. Like I said, tomorrow we're also going to talk about upcoming anime because that's just like. There's some shows coming out, and I could talk about those. Some of them are returning shows. Some of them are new shows. Are th Pat, are there new isekai? You better believe it. Pat, are these isekai somewhat interesting sounding? Yes, they are. Okay. Is one of them have a female protagonist who's not also a 30-year-old uh, businessman in the body of a young girl, but is instead... A girl reincarnated as a girl? Yes. The Tanya. Evil. Uh, Zorbs. That's 21 months. Twitch Prime. Zorbs, thank you so much. Let's throw the bear cave on there. Thanks, Zorbs, for that. Thank you very much. Uh, 21 months. Zorbs is a consistent supporter. Uh, an early adopter of the bear cave shenanigans. Uh, I very much appreciate it. Your continued support, Zorbs. Thank you. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a few shows coming out in October. There's like, let's see. The things I'll talk about tomorrow. Yeah, I got uh, two returning shows and three shows that sound interesting. I'll talk about one of them now. I'll talk about more tomorrow. Made the kids apple crisp tonight. We totally ate it all, and I regret nothing. Zorbs, no need for leftovers with an apple crisp. If you got if you got enough people for it, you just go for it. Just live your life. Uh, that sounds rad. Uh, oh, I knocked off the coffee maker. I have to, to fix the coffee maker. Oh yeah, I can just I can open it up. I can just open up the hatch now, and replace the coffee maker. How convenient. These chairs don't. Stay on too great. That's good. Hinge, hinge is working well. Uh, there's an isekai that is coming out in October that I want to go. Yes, I really do dig this set. I really liked um, the uh, heavy transport that I did right before this. Uh, and this one's cool as well. Uh, I, I'm digging this. Um, uh, um, so there's an isekai that's coming out that I'm very excited about. And the premise is there's a professional wrestler that gimmick is that they tame beasts or destroy beasts or beat beasts or whatever. And this wrestler gets summoned to a fantasy world and gets tasked with defeat all the beasts in the land. And he's like, well, that's a wrestling gimmick. I don't do that. And so apparently he suplexes a princess and leaves and then opens up a pet store. And it's a fantasy world with a former professional wrestler turned uh, pet store owner. And that's a show. That's a manga. And now it's an anime. And, I'm gonna, and it's coming out on the second of October uh, called Kadage uh, uh, Kimono Michi Kimono Michi and uh, it sounds incredible I can't wait to watch it it sounds like a pet bear 
Harold, it sounds like the show I would write. Hey, so I get some into a fantasy world, but I'm like, I'm not doing any of that bullshit. I'm doing this shit. Uh, there's a there's an anime or there's a um, a light novel that uh, um, that is based on if someone had made a video game. There, there's a bunch of those games where you play the the innkeeper or you play the um, uh, you're the uh, uh, the shopkeeper uh, in in an RPG, uh, and it's like and someone did a light novel based on that concept. And I can't remember the name of it, but there's a light novel out there that is like a person is summoned to another world and they're just like, they're like, well, you can choose any class you want. And the guy's just like, well, someone's got to, and he looks around and he's like, y'all get all this stuff and then you don't, but you don't have the right equipment. And so he just becomes the best merchant in all of this fantasy world. And it's just like, I don't know, there seems to be a need for it. This is what I did in my day job. And so he just becomes a shop owner. And he's like the best shop owner. And there's like craftsmen want to work for him. And he starts up like an economy in this small town. Uh, and I just like, I like that idea. So I love the idea of like, no, I'm going to open up a pet store. I'm not going to go beat up these beasts. You can get out of here with that. That's a real good idea. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. But that one I really like. As soon as I heard about it, I was like, I want to know more about this. I still don't know if that anim anime uh, uh, about the former Yakuza turned house husband. I don't know if that's got optioned, if that's going to be an anime. Uh, or if it's been licensed in the U.S. Uh, but the premise is that like, yeah, it said there's a Yakuza, Yakuza guy. Uh, I have not told Jeff or Dan about it. Uh, when it starts airing, I will probably tell Dan because he might want to watch it for Pan and Stream. Um, but I'm going to wait until... Because there hasn't even been a preview yet. It's just been announced. There, When a preview video is out, I'll probably reach out. But I think think Dan would definitely be into it. And Jeff as well. Um, so, uh, there's this manga. Or it might be... Yeah, it's a manga. Uh, where there's a guy who used to be in the Yakuza and he met like this like cool, nice business lady. And they really hit it up. And so he's left his life. And she brings home the money. And he like takes care of the house. So he's got to learn how to like do all that. And like. Uh, there's this incredible thing where he's like. Got a bunch of people around. And he Googles on his phone. How to beat up a bunch of guys or something like that. Like he's just like. Trying to figure out that. And then like fighting against. Uh, all the uh, housewives for like the sales and learning that whole thing and just like how to be a person in a re in a committed relationship that is doesn't involve violence or isn't centered around violence. I just think that's like such a cute premise for a show. Uh, but right now that's just a manga, I believe. Hopefully there'll be more of it because it seems pretty neat and like something I would be into. I got some more green for the interior here. Working on the top of her. Apparently, this is the uh, this is a little uh, bed. You can see there's a slope here. I guess that's like the pillows. And there's a little... You climb through. So, this is the bed above the uh, cab. Which is pretty accurate for this kind of caravan. The attention to detail there is pretty gosh darn neat. Ah. Uh. Oh, and our final sticker's got to go in the front. Our final decal of this kit. Right on there. And, er, yeah, that's good enough. All right. And that pops up on there. A lot of white in this kit, obviously, which is fun. Because, you know, when we do Lego here, we often do uh, Star Wars stuff. And that's not, you know, colorful. It's never colorful. And then we got this thing, which is going to be, I guess, like a kickstand. Or, not kickstand, but like a stopper for, uh, for when you've detached it. 
Got to put wheels on it. We're getting close to being done with this kit. This was a fun build. Both these Lego builds were very fun. That helicopter, particularly, was pretty cool on Monday. Happy to put that together. But yeah, ever since they did the pizza van, uh, Lego should sell just bags of props for sets. That would be great. Oh, yeah, like accessories. Yeah. That would be pretty fun. All right, so this goes like this. Yeah, that's the thing that pops down when you got... Uh, you disattach the caravan from the pickup. All right, so then we got to put on white stuff on top of here. But yeah, ever since we did the pizza van, I've been looking for more excuses to do this. And also, these are both pretty reasonably priced. I mean, I'll try and you know pick the both of them up, but they're. Uh, I'll say I put a, some more Lego on my wish list, and I picked up a Lego wish thing that is a three in one, because uh, I like the Lego creators a lot. And then also, I don't think this is unfair for me to say uh let's see one two three four five six and seven two three four six seven two three um it makes sense for me to the three in ones make a lot of sense for streaming because you know not each of the three in one kits use all the pieces that come with it but they use most of it so you gotta build it once and then take it apart and then build it again take it apart and build it again that takes a little while, so that's good for this, for the streams. Uh, the space shuttle we did was really fun, so I'm excited to work on uh, another one that's coming in the mail at some point, and we'll work on it in the future. But we got to do the uh, Gundam that's coming our way from uh, Recyclable. Sent a Gundam in the mail. And that's coming. And that'll be the thing that we work on uh, after the uh, the uh, Vig Nagina. Which is a weird name for a model kit. The Vig Nagina. The Vig Nagina. Alright, we gotta put some wheels on. So we'll put some wheels on here. Get some wheels ready to go. These are easy. We already did wheels. A lot of wheels in this. Uh, Amazon says it should arrive on Friday. Cool. So the Vigna Gina is going to take a little while. Um, you know, like we're going to start it today. So it'll probably be sometime next week, Recyclable, when the build starts because we're going to start the Vigna Gina in. Uh, I, it's been really very rare for me to just stop working on a kit to work on something else. We, we paused a kit. Uh, no worries. Yes, but thank you for the heads up. I appreciate that. Um, we paused a kit when we started working on uh, the wrestling belt because I had a time crunch on that. And then we paused the kit uh, when I did my Halloween pumpkin carving, which, spoiler alert, I'm going to do again this year because it was really fun. But this year, instead of buying tiny pumpkins, I'm going to buy a big old pumpkin and I'm going to try to do it a big old pumpkin instead of carving tiny pumpkins, which are not necessarily meant to be carved. Uh, so this pops in like this. It's good. And this pops up. And then, boom. Caravan. We did it, y'all. We did it. We got some extra pieces. They go into the bag that we saved for extra pieces. Thank you, Lego, for all these extra pieces. Always appreciate that. And boom and boom and boom. This in there. Two two bags to hate or two instruction manuals. I hate that. Just this was a three hundred what uh, what was this? This was a three hundred and forty four piece kit. Just make a big bot bag or a big instruction book. Don't make two instruction books. It's frustrating. I don't like it. Um but yeah. Here's the uh, here's the wildlife caravan and the sport pickup truck. And then it's got this thing pops out, which is cool for for photos and a lot. And we can put we can put uh, our lady with her big old uh, camera in there. 
Oops, oh no. Oh no, her hair fell off. I fucked up. Put her in there. Oh no. Oh, the door opens, that's right. There's a door on this side, so I can place her. Do that. Oh. Try to stage this right for it so it looks good in photographs. I'm gonna take photos later. Do that. And then this guy can't sit. So because he his legs don't move. So he'll just go outside and he's caught a fish. And then he's got some weird little accessories. Hell yeah. That opens up. Let's put them right there. And then that'll that'll be the photo I take later. But you can see inside. Yeah, little it's a it's a cool this is a cool kit. You know, it's not pizza van cool, but it's still cool. Oh no. Coffee or coffee mug. Oh no. It's still a cool kit. I'm so psyched about it. So thank you very much, Ultron, for these two cool Lego sets. Uh, they were fun to build, and I'll be taking photos of this for the Discord, as always. Yeah. Um, we'll put this aside for now, so I can take a photo later, because it's time to switch gears and switch from Lego to Gunpla. That's right. We're switching gears from Lego to Gunpla. It's time to go to this one. There it is. Boom, boom, boom. It's Megatron, the mobile suit. The mobile suit from Gundam Wing, F-91, the movie. The Figdagina has a beam rifle, a beam launcher, beam sabers, a defensive backpack thing. It's got... One of them beam shields that F-91 has. We'll put that together too. We've got our snipper clips. Oh, oh, oh no. I just straight up. My snipper clips caught my webcam. Haha. -ha. Oh yeah, we got our snipper clips. I've got uh, my pieces over here. So, uh, before... We'll, we'll take a pause for the cause in just a moment. But I did want to just explain... RE100. What's RE100? It's the relaunch uh, of kits that it's attention to detail like you would find in a Master Grade. But, sometimes things are hollow, where instead of having a skeleton, it'll just be hollow. They cut corners. It's a little a bit of a high grade. It's a little bit of a Master Grade. The Vignagina is a small kit anyway. It's a, actually an odd choice for an RE100 because it ends up looking kind of small against other Master Grades. But, it's a way to do for that for um, for Bandai to put out kits that they just doesn't make sense to do as a master grade. Um, so it should be interesting to put together. Um, uh, F91, not super familiar. We built the F91 uh, before the Freedom. Uh, Harold says good night. I'll catch you tomorrow, Harold. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, friend. Pleasure as always, my friend. Um, yeah, so we will we'll put this together. Um, it is ten o'clock, so it's been an hour. So it is time for a pause for the cause um, to just say hi. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're currently a subscriber, you can go to the Bear Cave emote, the Lego emote in there. Uh, subscribing is a huge, great, easy way to support me. If you're watching here after. Uh, on YouTube, you can find all the links I'm about to say in the show description. If you're watching live, I'm going to put some links in there, ways you can support. If you can't subscribe, I get that. That's fine. Watching the streams is awesome. It's so nice to have you here. Um, that's a great way to support. Um, bits and coins, always appreciate it. Harold is currently the uh, the uh, bit leader. You can see the top of up there, which is 10 bits. 11 bits, you're the bit leader. You can join in there. And bits and coins, or bits, cheer, 
uh, just means my payout every month is a little bit bigger, a little bit brighter. Um, should be getting the payout soon. Uh, I don't know when that's coming. That should be any day this week. Uh, and it's just a, uh, a way to help support the stream if that's something you'd like to do. Um, if you don't want to do Twitch subscription using Cash Money or Twitch Prime, uh, use your Twitch coin because you linked your Amazon Prime with Twitch. You don't have to do that. You could also join me on Patreon. Patreon's a alternate to that. I set up Patreon for people that just want to have recurring and don't want to be connected with Twitch. There's a way. There's some rewards. You can get my videos early. Uh, the video that I'm going to link at the end of this uh, chat, uh, Background and Characters, my weekly show I put out every Wednesday. Well, $5 patrons got to see that yesterday. So, you know, if you like things getting things a little early, getting some emails with some early shit, you can do that. Uh, we talked about how uh, the Lego sets, the two last Lego sets that we did, the one we just finished today and the one we finished up on Monday, those were bought by Ultron off my Amazon wish list. Uh, and I'm going to put a link to my Amazon wish list here in the chat in just a moment. Um, uh, you buy something on there, it just gets sent to me. Uh, we mentioned that Recyclable bought something on there. I'm excited to build that in the future. And as I mentioned, Recyclable thing... As soon as we get it, it's the next thing in line. It jumps the queue. I have uh, another uh, Lego set, and I have I have two other Lego sets that I could build, but those take a back seat because of that. So I've got cheap stuff up top, down to more expensive things, very to very expensive things. And you know they run the gamut. Uh, occasionally there are things that are not available, but they come back, so I just have to keep them listed, so I don't have to find them later. Uh, you know, if that's something you'd like to see me build, feel free to pick something up off the wish list. Um, I should mention there's an alternative to my wish list, which is if you don't want to support Amazon, you could go to USA Gundam Store and buy a gift card. And then you get a code in your email with that gift card. You don't get it physically, you just get a code. Then you whisper me here on Twitch, you send me a DM. My DMs are open on. Uh, on uh, Twitter, and you go, hey, here's a gift card code, and then I, when I have enough money on USA Gundam Store, I'll buy something from USA Gundam Store. Uh, and then I also have a coffee, code dash fi coffee, and you can just join that if there's something you'd like to do. It's one-time donations, just ways to support the stream. As always, all of this, if you just watch, if you never subscribe, if you never send me a dime, your time is your money. That is totally reasonable, and I totally understand that, and I got no issues with that. Thank you for even watching. It's awesome to have folks in here. Um, uh, you know, it's since day one, there's always been somebody watching, and that's been incredible, and I am genuinely thrilled with that. Uh, I have a Discord. You can join my Discord, the Bill Will Bear community. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh uh, I post photos of stuff I build, and people uh, every week, you know, contribute uh, their uh, stuff they work on or plug themselves. There's a section if you're a streamer, you can plug. Uh, and then, as I said, background of characters. Uh, this one's the most like, pretty much like a sketch I've done in a while. I found a video, uh, a photo that was kind of funny, and then like created a character around that photo. It's kind of a it's, it's premise that I thought was pretty funny. Um, and so that I put that up there, but I do a new one of those every week and, uh, I have to record, uh, next week I'll have to record two, but tomorrow I just have to record one. Um, we'll talk about anime in a moment. I just want to go and look at, I have to look at my analytics here for just one moment. This is bullshit stuff that you, okay. That, that makes sense. Okay. That's why, uh, yeah, that's going to be, pages, uh, all right, I am not going to, okay, huh. That's interesting. Sorry. There's a... Uh, somebody... Somebody is using Twitch Prime uh, that gives me money and it's under review, which I've never seen before. Apparently, it sounds like somebody is trying to scam 
Twitch and maybe don't have Twitch Prime? I don't know. That seems bad. That's not good. Uh, my numbers have dropped a little bit, subscription-wise. And that's okay. I understand that. That's that's how things go. But, you know, uh, hopefully uh, I get a few more folks, uh, you know, popping in soon. It's, it's totally okay. Uh, but, yeah, I don't think I'm going to get a payout this month, which is all right means next month will be a good big number. So I'll take that. Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. Let's start building this model kit. And I'll start talking about some anime from this week. Uh, stuff that came out yesterday and today. I managed to have time to watch them. And I could talk about them. I will go in order of them coming out. First and foremost, Black Clover. Holy shit. A lot of fucking action. It's good. Last week was a flashback that we was already pretty like obvious and kind of unnecessary flashback. So to have actual information come out, I was very pleased um, with that. Uh, and it was a lot. A lot of, inf lot of action. Uh... Apparently, our evil, 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 but our hurt, our uh, our lich, uh, the reincarnation of uh, the lich, with evil plan has finally been understood about what that means, and it means how are they going to destroy the earth? There are no elves left. Well, a bunch of very powerful elves are now taking over the bodies of humans. Uh... Uh, very strong humans and they're going to use the and then they get powered up by taking them over and they're going to use that power to destroy the humans and that sucks because now our heroes have to fight their friends and that's fucked up and not cool it's a bummer uh, I went to the hobby store today says Lashbrook and I didn't pick up a kit but I did get a little Converge, uh, little Converge series, uh, Zacarello for my desk. Oh, cool. That's fun. Uh, didn't get a kit at your hobby store. What's up, Lashbrook? Are you okay? Didn't get a kit at the hobby store. Oh, what's going on there? Um, uh, but yeah, Black Clover, great animation, great fight scenes, uh, continues to just be a solid show that no one talks about and that's fine uh it's okay that people don't want to talk about that show it's just me over here really liking it um uh i have like five left to build well that makes sense lashbrook yeah if you've got if you've got a backlog you want to hit that backlog i get it uh, you know i'm just joshing you more like surprise than anything else um, Are You Lost? I watched Are You Lost, and that show is, continues to be great. Um, it is, you know, half length. Uh, there's some discoveries that end on a cliffhanger. Uh, the character growth has been really interesting with some of these characters. Uh, I've been overall very pleased with it. Um, I, uh, I can't wait for next Tuesday because, like I said, the, it ended on a cliffhanger. I don't know what's going to go on. There, were, What's going on? There was smoke. It could have easily been one of them, but they, it was overnight, and so it might be that there is another person uh, on the island with these four teens. Lashbrook says, I was mostly looking for some sort of glue for the parts of that real grade I broke. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what Gorilla Glue or Blue Tack. Uh, I don't know what's going to work for you, my friend, but good luck. Um, that reminds me, I got to try to use the Blue Tack tonight after stream um, for tomorrow. Because tomorrow I'm going to uh, shoot uh, the next. Um, 
uh, in my series on Closer Look, I'm going to look at the Kit Bash project that we did. So that was like the before and after, the you know the conversation about what it's going to be followed up by actually looking at it. And I want to take all the um, uh, hot glue that I used and remove all that hot glue and replace it with um, blue tack because I think that'll, or at the very least, like as much as I can, even if the center has some glue in it. But I want to remove the glue that's like easily seen. Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously, like without looking at the kit, I can't tell you what works and what doesn't uh, for how how it's broken. But I hope you find something that works, Lost Brook. Uh, I mean, when I had to fix a, the last time I had to fix something besides the you know adhering two pieces together, when I had to do some fix, I use a toothpick for structure and structural integrity and then hot glue to keep it in place and luckily it's in a spot you can't see it but yeah good luck Lashbrook uh, yeah I don't know if it's going to be Gorilla Glue or what but you'll figure something out you'll find something so this kit just seems to be a bunch of yeah we got our chest piece here I believe this kit has an alternate chest piece as well there's like an alternate build part to it. But we'll go with the one that they uh, have you build here. Um, all right. So those are the two shows I give on Tuesday. Are you lost? If you're not watching it, it's like I said, it's half length. You should just watch it. I think it, it there were some like questionable moments in the first couple episodes that they've pretty much gotten past. And now we're starting to see the characters be their dependable selves. And uh, it's been pretty, pretty good. Pretty solid. Seeing these characters kind of like grow and change has been cool. Uh, the next show I want to talk about is uh, Isekai Cheat Magician. This was a lot of action in this one. Uh, we didn't find out. So cliche. I, I can't tell if the evil plan from the evil crew is to test them or to unlock potential in them or to like flush out the person that summoned them that we haven't seen yet I don't understand this evil plan but it seems dumb and unnecessary uh, there was a somewhat of a comical moment that they, we got introduced kind of briefly uh, a episode or, or two ago to like two young twins that um, seem to be evil. They're not evil. Or maybe they are, but they're they needed help. But I guess we got new compatriots now. Now we've got the former assassin. We've got uh, our overpowered main character. We've got the still very powerful support character. We've got um, just a bunch of uh, a bunch of good characters, and it's it's not my favorite isekai of this season, anyway. But it's still uh, solid. It's still a solid show. Like I said, it was going pretty slow, and it's still pretty slow, but I don't know. I like it. It's fine. Um, so we have to decide right now, folks. We have two chest plates that we can put on here. One is... Uh, it's like the under gate chest piece here. We've got two different ones. And they're just like one's rounded... So there's this one. Which seems fine. It's kind of a rounded. And then this one's got like more dimensions to it. And so I might like that better. But it's also like I don't really care that much. Which no, I I mean I did those you couldn't see me. I leaned in too far. So it's got this one here, which has got like more dimensions to it. Uh, and more angles, I should say. And then this one, which is more curved. 
I don't know. The undergate piece looks... The under piece is pretty angled. I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to pull out the ang angled piece, and then I'll look at that. I think that'll actually help us decide. Because once the bottom is put in, you can compare it. I think that's good. Um, e... 16. Uh, one of the things about the RE100 kits is that they they go together pretty quick. Uh, this is not gonna this is not gonna take as long as a master grade would take to build. Um, I mean, it's not like a high grade assembly. Um, and the head does have a couple pieces that are a little small. And uh, oh, there is a is there stickers? I think there were stickers. Thing. I guess there are. Oh yeah, there are stickers. Okay. Uh, this is an odd assortment because I believe this is, uh, yeah, the stickers look like they were dry transfers, but I guess they are some. Some of them are stickers, and some of them are dry trans or are transfers. It looks like I can't tell. Try to peel off some of this here. I want. Yep, so some of these are stickers, and some of these are transfers. I've never seen that before. That's interesting. Uh, it is, so it's not so recyclable. Um, the RE100 is a line that's generally, it's for kits that would be too big to build as master grades because they're just sized wrong. Or scale is so weird. Uh, the Hama Hama, the, you can look them up. They're basically like... They're in between master grades and high grades. So they're more detailed than high grades. They're basically like the 1-100 equivalent of like a real grade, I guess. Uh, although I guess real grades are technically like small master grades. But it, it, so it, yeah, it's an odd scale. I built a few of them. They're usually meant for kits that just would be way too expensive. And also sometimes, because they, you know, they skip corners here and there, um... This kit is a little small, so this might just be a thing where, they're like, even in 100 scale, they were like, whatever. It's not that many sheets, you know. It's like, this is a good indication. If you look at the leg here, look how few pieces the leg is. It's like, part of that, there, there. There's no skeleton. It's going to be a very hollow leg. So they, like, I don't want to say cut corners because that's not what they're doing. It's just the style of it is... Um, and they're they're usually like cheaper than master grades in many in many instances. Uh, yeah, they're a fun they're a fun collection. Um, so yeah, it's a guy cheap magician is fine. It's a fine show. I stopped watching you know one of the it's a guys and so like if this one is like my second favorite, I guess with Demon Lord retry, I guess being my third favorite or second favorite, I don't know. I go back and forth because Demon Lord Retry, this week's episode was great. And some episodes are not great. There's a minor character in Demon Lord Retry that I think I think is fucking fantastic. So there's there's a couple minor characters that I are just annoying. But this one is great. She is a holy wizard. She knows magic for the church. So she's a holy magician. She does all healing spells and holy spells. But She's also going through a phase where she's obsessed with darkness and evil. So she talks like she's a big evil person and then heals folks. And she talks about like darkness and how she's attracted to darkness and darkness is attracted to her and demons and all this stuff. But she's a like a priest character. It's like a pre priest class. And I think that's a funny dichotomy because people call her out constantly going like, that sounded kind of evil, but you're like, helping us so thanks she's like yeah follow me into darkness and they're like uh, okay i don't know i like that i think it's fun all right so looking at the bottom here i'm gonna go with this one the one that has more angles to it the one that is not as curved i think that just looks better than the curved one which is 
yeah, I think it just looks cooler, so we'll go with that. Um, yeah, Demon Lord retry. So if you don't know the show, um, premise is uh, a dude gets summoned to a fantasy world, but he gets summoned in the body of his video game character. But his video game character was like, because they're summoning a demon lord. So he gets summoned in a character he created, the demon lord. But he's not a demon lord. It was like a nickname. Because it was like an MMO, but like not a fantasy MMO that he played. It was more like a GTA Online, like kind of survival. There was, it's some, it's like, it's like a GTA or maybe like um, a Rust style like game because there was building involved as well. I mean, it's, it's not clear exactly what the game was, but he helped work on it. So he's trapped in like what looks like a mafia boss, his body, but he can do spells and stuff. And he's fighting some stuff and fighting demons. He fights a big old vampire, um, but he doesn't fight as himself. He can switch to other characters, to, alt, to one of his alts. And so he switches to one of his alts, which is kind of fun. Uh, he's just like a fighting guy. He's like a Ryu style character. Um, but because he has a dragon on his back and can do holy magic, people think that he's like a new version of the dragon kin, that he's like a half dragon. Uh, and I, I appreciate that, that they're like, oh, we don't understand what this is in because we don't have fighting games. So in our context, we'll say you're a dragon. You're like a dragon man. Okay, I guess you're a dragon man. I don't know. I, there's stuff to like about it. Uh, there's a lot of goofy sex stuff as well because it's an isekai that I think is annoying. I kind of like that the big bad tough lady uh, is all puddles around um, the uh, the dragon born because he treats her like a lady, and no one ever, has ever done that. I don't know. It's it's enjoyable. It's fine. Uh, I guess between that and Ari Fuerta, I'm glad I didn't give up my Hulu. I'm slowly re-watching um, One Punch Man Season 2 and kind of savoring it. Because uh, that's originally why I renewed my Hulu, was it was the only way to watch it subtitled. Um, so I'm slowly going through it again. Because, you know... I pay for Hulu, so I might as well... You know, I watch a few other things, but... Those are the two anime I'm watching. There is a cop show, but I've heard literally nothing good about it. The only thing I've heard about it is, like, some people that don't like it. It's like, a, It's a fantasy, but in our world, there's magic, and, like, it's a buddy cop show, but one of them is, like, a magical girl... And the other one is just, like, a cop. And I was like, that premise seems pretty cool. But I have heard nothing about it. Other than, like, one friend of mine was like, it's not good. And that's all I've heard. So, I have not watched it. Um. Alright. Uh, A16. I need A16. put a face on this thing. Okay. Uh, like Will Smith's Bright. Yes. I guess like Bright. I don't know. But I've heard, I guess much like Bright, I've heard nothing good about it. And no one I know has said anything approaching liking it at all. So we'll see. Uh, Alright, so I gotta put a sticker on here. I like this uh, silver sticker for the eyes. It looks pretty cool. I think it'll look pretty neat with the blue over it. See. You know, stickers that have to go over material and turn. I'm usually very bad at applying, so we'll see if I can do this. Eh. Didn't 
didn't do that good. Whatever. We'll put the blue on. You won't even notice. Yeah. Looks pretty good. And then... B124 and B125. See, we're already finished the chest and moving on to the head. Like, this will not be a super long build. I think we'll finish it up next Monday. My assumption is we'll, you know, we'll we'll get most of it done um, by the end of the, this next stream, by tomorrow's stream. And there'll be a few days. Like, fr like I said, Friday I'm going to do uh, some, uh, some Gunpla. Not Gunpla, I'm going to do some Hearthstone. Earlier, someone asked about Hearthstone, uh, and I apologize that I didn't answer because we were talking about other things. Um, I am still playing a rogue deck. I've got a better rogue deck that's like more competitive that I'm liking. Um, it's less nonsense, but still nonsense, and I enjoy that. And then I've got a spell hunter deck uh, that I re that I added, you know, one new card to, but that card gets me weapons and beasts and is pretty versatile. So. It does mean that I draw cards with Zul'jin, but it also means that sometimes I win without getting Zul'jin, which is uh, great. That is a great thing if that's possible. If I can, uh, if I can win uh, without that. Uh, uh, Shaxton Wiki is now following. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Yeah, folks, if you if you follow just, you know, from Twitter or whatever, like, you know, click on here when I do that. Uh, consider giving me a follow. Turn your notifications on so you know when I stream. You know, my next stream will be tomorrow. So, appreciate that. Always appreciate the follow uh, as we work on this kit. Here. And 15. Um... So yeah, I think that's, yeah, I talked about the four shows I want to talk about. Tomorrow I'll talk about, uh, if it's for my daughter, I'd even defeat a demon lord. And I'll talk about, um, I don't know, I'm, uh, I'm trying to get to watch some more of uh, Demon Slayer. Because apparently, Demon Slayer got really good. I was, like, not into it because it felt very, just, like, it was, like, a silly shounen. And I just wasn't in the mood for, even though, like, awful things had happened, the silliness I wasn't really into. But apparently, it just gets better and better, and I've been missing out on a great show. So, I'm going to rectify that and try to catch up on, uh, on Demon Slayer. So, I might talk about that tomorrow. I don't know. I might watch a little bit more of that. Maybe I'll talk about my rewatch of One Punch Man Season 2, which I'm slowly doing just for funs. And there's just so much show out there. I do like to, you know, check in on the shows that uh, uh, enjoying Demon Slayer uh, quite a bit myself. Yeah, um, I just wasn't into it when it first came out. And now we're like 19 episodes in and, you know, like people have been saying for a while that it's it's very good. I just wasn't, yeah, I was, I wasn't taken by it when it first came out. I like the premise, but I was just like, yeah. Uh, I think it was just heavy in a way that I just wasn't up for. Like I keep waiting for the shoe to drop in given because the, now I'm caught up on given like, Hey, guess what? It's drama. And there's relationship stuff. Some things are not going to work out great. And I don't know. Just like, ooh, ooh. Just waiting for it. Waiting for the drama. Sad, sad realizations. That people do not want the same things that you want. Maybe it's not going to work out. Uh, Alright. Put this piece on here. This kind of looks like Megatron, as I said. I do like that about this kit, but it very much, color-wise, looks like Megatron. And then they're like, 
Alright, here's the version 2. We made it red. Cause char. Cause char? I don't know. We made it red. Don't be mad at us. I don't know. This thing is just... I mean, when they made the version 2, they also, like, put a crown on it. And it's like, come on, y'all. No. This was so different looking. Like, this... This head is weird. I love it. It's like got a... I mean, it's going for, like, almost like a tall geese, like, knight, like, style thing to it. Which I really appreciate. But also, as I said, the gray uh, and purple just makes me think of Megatron. And that's awesome. Oh, I dig it. Okay. So now we're going to work on the arms... And as you know, when you're dealing with kits like this, out to to a certain point, like a lot of it's just like do these twice, do these twice, because they're just the same. So that makes it very easy. Use a lot of these rubber connectors in this kit. That's a that's, they make a lot of uh, saves on equipment by doing that. So yeah, so we're just gonna be doing two at a time, going through nice and easy. Uh, just making cuts where we need to make the cuts, doing all that. But yeah, so my next stream is tomorrow, as I said, my normal Thursday stream. A stream that started it all. Um, I don't normally, I, I'm, I do like Wednesday night. I know that I can't always stream on Wednesdays. Um, and in fact, in two weeks, I will be doing a Wednesday stream as I prepare for, um, going out to uh, to Seattle for PAX, but it won't be at 9 o'clock because I am also covering a work shift, so it'll be like 6 to 8 um, so that I can go and cover a work shift. It's a very short shift, but it'll be good to pick up a little bit of money before I go out there. And uh, the Brooklyn Comedy Collective the way it works out is I'll get paid while I'm out there, which will be very nice. Because as I just figured out, I don't think I'm getting uh, a Twitch payment today or this week, this month. I think I won't get one till next month, which, hey, I can't complain, right? Like the fact that people support the streams is incredible and I'm very grateful for that. And the fact that many, many months... I've been able to have enough subscribers to get a payment every month has been incredible. So I'm not complaining about that. Always grateful for that. And then hopefully, uh, like I said, hopefully one of these job things turns into an actual job, like a full-time job. That would be pretty cool, friends real good and not the weird not job that happened today oh god gotta laugh uh if you're somehow watching this stream and haven't watched previous improvised postmortems and aren't hyped for the next one very soon what are you even doing well asmo i appreciate that very much improvised postmortem is one of my favorite things at uh at pax it's become a new favorite um i got a stellar crew uh, hey, I don't know if I've announced this. Abby Russell's doing it. We weren't sure if she was going to be there on Friday. She is, so she's doing it. Uh, so I got Abby Russell and uh, Dave Lang, a uh, uh, crew of Chicago that also that features um, uh, uh, Trin Garitano. And then also Mike Drucker's doing it. Stand-up comedian, comedy writer, uh worked for Treehouse and did the localization on the 3DS um, uh, 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 Kid Icarus, among other things he did at Treehouse. That's the one I know, I definitely know he did. Uh, Shit Arcade's own, Mike Drucker is doing it. Uh, known human, Mike Drucker. Internet person and friend of me, Mike Drucker's doing it. I'm very excited. Uh, Mike rolls. And uh, as soon as it was announced he was going there, um, I was like, 
Like, literally, I saw it, and then immediately it was like, hey, Mike, let me steal you on Friday. Are you available? Can you do the pay? You know, you he did the only one that I've done that wasn't at PAX. Uh, Trucker is cool. Went to his shit arcade. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be really good. I'm, uh, I'm trying to confirm one more duo, a classic duo. Uh, unfortunately, I have been unable to confirm both of them. But I'm attempting to do it. And then... One of the real shames is, and I get why they're doing this. You want alternatives, you want all that. I can't compete with Dub Fight. That's huge. That's, that's, uh, there are many folks from Loading Ready Red and Coming. They're starting like either half an hour before or half an hour after me. It bums me out that I'm competing against another comedy show that is improvised. It's a different premise, certainly, but it's still within the same kind of realm of comedy. But the thing I'm most bummed is, it's like, well, I want, I, I always want them to do it. I always want to get some of those folks to come and do it because they will be great at it. Um, because it's the most, you know, that panel that I do, the Infrared Postmortem, is the most short for me improv I, I do in my life. And they're, that's what a lot of them were trained in. Uh, and that's the style of improv they're most comfortable with. So it's like, they would kill it. I'm also always trying to get more uh, devs to do it. Lang always kind of represents the developer side. And uh, having Trin involved will help uh, in that crew because they, they make game stuff and work with games, uh, her Chicago crew. Um, but I always feel bad because I always feel like I'm just getting like games journalists and comedians to do it. Uh, and when Trites did it that one year... It was just like therapy for him. And so I'm like, oh, yeah, that could be kind of fun to, to get more game devs to do it. But it's just a timing thing. And also, uh, it feels like like uh, games journals, there is a crossover there uh, within the realm of comedy where some of them are, are comfortable doing it, uh, which you don't find in... Uh, in other fields for like game dev there's not a lot of there are some but not a lot of game devs that also did like comedy works or like improv anywhere or like were stand-ups there are some just not as many it seems like most of the devs i know try to do art school or did art school but not theater uh Someday, I'll uh, I'll have it at a time where I can book Sean Baptiste, who is a very funny person, and is on the top of my list of people that like it's just has had something to do and not and not been av available. Someday I'll book Sean because Sean would be incredible at it uh, and so good at the show. But yeah, I got some panels. I'm on two panels that I'm not producing and I'm producing two panels. So I'm doing four. Um, I am on standby on one other panel of which name I cannot say. Uh, Puzzler 20 is now following. Thank you for the follow Puzzler 20. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, there are a lot of like little uh, clip like a uh, extra detritus around here, so we got to do a little clipping and a little shaving to make these nice clean cuts. So that's a thing to look out for. That is also a symptom of the the style of kit. The RE100 kits often have that. Just have a little little extra material to get a clip off, or you could sand off. Uh, I think Dan Teasdale will be funny. Has he done one? No. Dan has not done packs in a very long time. Uh, but he would he would be funny to have up there. Uh, uh, yeah, Teasdale hasn't been to a PAX in quite some time. He's just been focused on the game dev side. And then also the family side stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bummer not to have Jeff. I mean, not to have most of the Giant Bomb crew is certainly a bummer. Um. Uh, it's weird. It's a weird thing because it was always like a no-brainer that they'd be around. 
Um, but, you know, people get busy. Uh, there are members of the Giant Bomb staff that don't love traveling or public speaking. And the live panels can be rough on them. So, and some of them have families that they don't want to leave. And I get it, but it's still a bummer. Because I like seeing my friends. I haven't seen, I haven't seen Brad Shoemaker in years now because I only saw him at PAX because I don't go to GDC or, I mean, Seattle at, or not Seattle. I don't go to San Francisco for anything. I haven't been to San Francisco in years. Uh, and it's a bummer. Cause I'd like to see my friend Brad. We're not too, too far away when I'm visiting my folks, but he's not, he hasn't like gone to South Carolina in a while either. I, I would love that. That would be great if I just like got in a car and drove to see Brad. <laughs> that would be very funny. All right. So now we got to put these hoses on here. Kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I uh, I'm looking forward to packs to seeing some people. You know, not like I said, not everybody, but you know, still gonna. There's still some people that are gonna be there, and I'm excited to see them. I mean, I get to hang out with Trin, so it's already gonna be good. And also, not tabling means I'm gonna go to booths and like try to play games, maybe. Or at the very least, maybe I'll go and shake hands with developers and say hi and talk to people. See what's up. Also, we've now done a bunch of uh, tabling at PAX. And then the first time ever, like, Danny has a table in band land and we're not going to fucking be around. I'm going to go see Danny. It's going to be great to see Danny. It's been, it's been a while, but uh, I was like, oh, that sucks. Go hang out with my friend. Uh, we won't be tabling, but I'm kind of looking forward to not worrying about it. I'm going to have buttons. I'm going to have League of Heels buttons and uh, Bear Cave buttons. And you can ask for a button if you see me. I will have a, uh, I will have a container of buttons on me at all times. Uh, especially after the uh, League of Heels video panel. The side panel, the sideshow panel. Uh, that'll be, yeah, I'll have that. So if people want buttons at PAX West, they can just come up and ask me for a button and I will give them one. I'm looking forward to being able to do that. That'll be nice. And got a legal button on my backpack right now. Hell yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I just did the logo. I did the one we've done before. And then the Bear Cave is literally, it is a button that is the Bear Cave emote uh, on a white button. Uh, it looks cool. I think it looks very cool. Oh, also, um, uh, I believe that uh, Xandra, who did all our uh, wonderful emotes, uh, uh, that Xandra will be... She, I know that she will be at PAX West, and I believe she will have some classic merch to sell. So if you missed out on any posters from the past, um, you can buy them or the comics. This is all classic, nothing new, but anything you may have missed, if you like missed an East Coast show, um, she'll have that. Uh, I need to find my lanyard from last year to get my League Hill and uh, uh, Brooke Go pin. Yeah. Yeah, we got the... Uh, yeah, it's the classic logo pin and then the bear cave pin. You know, I went basic on this one. I didn't want to design anything new if it was just buttons that I was handing out. And I try to say button and not pin because we're not in Penny Arcade. These are buttons. These are free buttons, not pins for sale. No stickers, no pins. Those are rules. guess they're a little lenient on pins that are not penny arcade if you sell them in like your store or like if you like um uh 
the double click sell pins all the time as like part of their merch so like that's okay for them to have them but stickers are nobody is allowed to, or should be giving away or selling stickers at facts because people like to stick stickers on stuff and then you know like vending machines or whatever and then people get people get mad and yell at the show that is putting on the convention and that makes sense I think that's reasonable I don't just stick random stickers anywhere but I understand that people do especially if you got one for free and you don't care about it like I can understand why you would shove it somewhere random and not care All right, so we're, we're working on their shoulder pieces here for the arms. Uh, like I said, they've got a little dangly bits, a little extra bit, bits here that you want to clip off uh, so that you get a nice clean connection here. Uh, as I said, I know little of this movie. I think I've seen most of it once. I don't know if I finished it. F91. Um, but I like this kit. I think this kit looks cool. Um, excited to start putting it together. And like I said, looks like Megatron. So recyclable. Um, it's a little hard to say. I think that tickets, I think that the fact that there are four PAXs in the U.S. have made some of the Seattle and Boston stuff a little less popular. Um, whereas, like, it's only been two years of PAX, Sal or PAX uh, Unplugged. But PAX Unplugged, year over year, they did very well. I don't know the numbers. I can't tell you numbers, but, like, people were there to hang out and like they had a good crowd so i don't know for sure i can't tell you like i don't i don't have statistics but even with four days like the four day convention i think that like making it so that each day is its own badge hurts south or hurts west a little bit on monday even though it's a holiday uh and I would say that Sunday at PAX East this year felt a little light. Whereas Friday and Saturday were very busy. And Thursday is still pretty busy. Thursday's busy. And Thursday, like, is a fucking... That's not a holiday. It's just a day. And people still come out. So I don't know. I think that, like, it's not slowing down. It, it most likely is going through a generational shift, which happens every five years or so with everything where like part of it is the changing media landscape but you know uh last forgot i can't imagine it going four days that seems to be the one that like is mostly you know is like the city is really happy san antonio is very happy about it but i can see that staying three days and being fine um East going four days seemed like a weird choice and maybe a bad one, but whatever. Um, so there's there's stuff going on like, I just think that right now it feels like, yeah, Giant Bomb folks are getting older. Uh, they did bring back four day badges this year, yes. Uh, and I said the floor is still frequently very packed and the big games consistently have multi-hour lines. Yeah. As well, I think there's still people there. I would say that like, it might feel like PAX is going through some stuff because some of the bigger devs aren't always going to be there. Or maybe like there's new devs coming in. And, uh, I think that like, there's a different crew of journalists, like, People I don't know from GameSpot are going to be there, and people I do know from GameSpot are not going to be there. Like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I have some friends that aren't going to West because they're at Crunchyroll Expo. Uh, um, because uh, that's the same weekend. I'd like to go to Crunchyroll Expo. 
um, at some point. It'll be really fun. But it's the same weekend, and so no. But, uh, you know, in four years... Uh, yeah, Crunchyroll's in San Jose. In four years, maybe I'm at Crunchyroll Expo, and I'm not at PAX West. It's weird to think about the idea of me not being at, pa at, at, at a at PAX West or East, or unplugged. I mean, unplugged. I'm. I mean, I'm not going to table it unplugged. I don't think League of Heels is going to be in. Um, I can't imagine League of Heels is going to be unplugged. But I'll probably do some panels and go to unplugged because it's Philly, and Philly is right. Like it's such a short train ride. Uh, like the Amtrak ride is nothing. So I'm most likely going. Uh, to unplugged and a lot of fun there but like probably not tabling and doing anything major there just like going to go and having a good time but yeah I, you know there, there are conventions that I don't get to go to that I'd like to check out we'll see um, uh, as I said the reason why we're streaming tonight is because uh, I wanted to get my six hours of building in because I'm taking Saturday night off. I'm going to uh, work at uh, FlameCon, which is a queer-focused uh, Comic-Con uh, or comic convention, I should say. Uh, very, mu very excited to work on that. I'm volunteering, so I will be there on Saturday. Uh, if you're in the New York area and going, I will be... At the staging area, I gotta look this up. Uh, I'm gonna look at my schedule right now, because I'm I'm working in the staging and then at uh, a booth, uh, and I gotta look that up. I literally don't remember. There it is. Uh, I'm working 2:30 to 6:30 at the stage, the performance stage area. I will be there, uh, helping out, doing, getting whatever people need. Uh, making sure they had time for warm-ups and our places and have waters and all that. And then 6.30 to 8.30, I'll be at the info booth. Just a couple hours. Uh, and that, that'll be on Saturday. Uh, so uh, I hope to see some folks that are in the New York area uh, coming to check out the old Flame Con. It's a, a very good time. And you will have fun if you go. And if you don't go... Well, you might just still have fun on Saturday. It just won't be with me. Uh, we're going to finish this up. These are going to be our shoulder pieces. I'll do a little bit more, and then we'll we'll wrap things up in just a moment. Um, anytime I stream outside of my normal stream schedule, there's always a point where I wonder, is this the stream for nobody? Uh, I can confidently say that no. While it is not the highest numbers I've ever done, Y'all did turn out, and I do appreciate that very much. Uh, I August has just been very inconsistent. I hope that September will be more. Um, uh, again, I am uh, streaming tomorrow, normal time, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern time, tomorrow, my normal Thursday stream, and then Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, I'm playing Hearthstone for my weekly bonus gaming stream. Just going to play some uh uh some decks just having some fun uh tomorrow oh, that, that's on friday four o'clock 4 p.m eastern and then on uh saturday no stream no stream on saturday uh and then uh next week normal next week will be the normal schedule let me double check right Yes, I have no reason to believe the next week will not be different, including finally streaming the actual time I stream on Saturdays on Saturday next week. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, and then the week after that, will be all up in the air because of PAX, where if I can, I will stream from my Airbnb, but I have no idea if that'll work until I get there. The goal is to stream uh, Thursday night, which is before all the PAX stuff, and then Monday night, because I don't have anything to do on Monday that I'll go in and stream. And I'll stream 6 p.m. Pacific time, which will be 9 p.m. Eastern. So I'll stream my normal time and then have like a little bit of my night. That's the goal anyway. Uh, but as I said, I won't know if that works until I get there. 
So I can't make any promises about that. But I can promise that I will see you tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern. That's the end of the stream. I'm going to throw the emotes in there. Thank you so much for hanging out. Consider becoming a subscriber uh, or tell a friend or buy a model kit. Um, and see you tomorrow on the next Build With Bear Workshop. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Buzz click. Thank you for the follow. You had followed right as the stream was ending, but I got the thank you in. Thanks for the follow. Uh, oh, and we got a sub in uh, with Twitch Prime. Thank you so much for that sub. Uh, I really appreciate it. Let's throw the Bear Cave and the Lego, and I'll throw the Scythe the Moat in there. Last second, just as I was about to hit stop streaming, we get a new sub in there. That's awesome. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next Bill with Bear workshop. Bye-bye.